You guys know what this means? Finally, this means it's time to install some fairing strips. You know, like pieces of wood to use to attach other pieces of wood. That's what we're doing. We're going to be doing the sides and the ceiling. So that means a lot of screwing, a lot of drilling, a few cuts here and there. It's like 30 feet worth of furring strips twice on the sides and then five times. I think I'm gonna do five strips across the top, like front to back. So yeah, let's get to that. Screws, miter saw, impact drill, drill drill. Tape measure. I'm pretty sure that's all I'm gonna need to do all of this. From the sides to the ceiling. I think it's pretty straightforward. Pretty much like what we did with the uh, subframe floors. Pre-drill the holes, screw them in. Uh, yeah, here we go. You see that there? Every time I see water on the ground, I feel like I've got a leak and it freaks me out. I'm just so terrified of more leaks because it's like an ongoing battle with me and this bus. It just doesn't want to seal properly. But it's from the buddy here. So we're good. Instagram and YouTube can prepare me enough for when we actually have walls and our sink and stuff in here and then we're gonna start building our furniture. Slowly but surely. Yeah. really enjoy that skylight. But all right, two things that I didn't actually talk about in the video that I, when I found out this information, I thought it was pretty valuable. So I wanna share it with you. I was watching Gilligan Phantom. He has a really good channel talking about his whole bus build. And he was talking about like conductivity. Conductivity between the metal and the wood. I don't exactly remember like the specifics, but basically what he was saying is, if you use like an eighth of an inch of this rigid foam, it cuts down the conductivity between the metal to wood by like 500%. So a little fun detail. So everywhere that there's a screw, there's actually an eighth inch piece of rigid foam spacing the wood in between the metal. And what that basically means is the transfer between the outside temperature to the wood is a lot less because of that rigid foam. So it doesn't transfer through as much as it would if it was just metal to wood. 
So then the next thing is, if you notice, I ran my furring trips from front to back. And the reason is, like when I first started doing a lot of research, I joined a bunch of schoolie forums on Facebook and, and someone posted a comment and they basically talked about like people that were putting the furring strips on the side of the ribs as opposed to the top. And like, I understand the whole like height difference. I mean, this is like a half of an inch. So if you're really concerned about height, then you wouldn't do this. But people are putting their furring strips along the bus ribs. So they're screwing like 90 holes throughout the bus on the sides and that actually weakens the metal and the structure of it by quite a bit. I mean, if you imagine, if I've got a seven and a half foot span, I'm gonna put at least 20 extra holes into this rib, God forbid the bus rolls over, the structural point between each one of these weakens quite a bit. So whether that's completely true, whether that's something to be concerned about or not, I decided just to kind of run them front to back anyways and it was actually quite a bit easier, I think, a lot less screwing. And then putting the panels in, I think they were just kind of giving me more contact points to be able to screw into as opposed to one every two and a half feet. So that's just kind of some insight that I learned that I thought was pretty valuable. So I just kind of wanted to share that with you from the reason behind this stuff. Whether it actually makes a big difference, I don't know. It wasn't any harder doing it one way versus the other. So, so yeah, I appreciate you guys following along. Like it if you like it, dislike it if you don't like it. And if you could subscribe, that would mean a lot to me and my family. We'll keep doing this thing. And like I said before, I don't do like a Patreon or anything like that. Just not something I'm really comfortable with. But if you guys know anybody that needs any video work or editing done or stories told or anything that I can do to help you guys out, please send them my way. I'd love to help. The cool thing about this bus is once it's finished, I'll be a lot more mobile so I can kind of go wherever. But for the time being, I can kind of do any kind of gig that I need to. So I appreciate you guys. 